We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this presentation is being recorded and pay our respects to Aboriginal people and their elders past, present and emerging. Hi, our names are Leanne McCourt and Karen Kirsten. Together with Brooke Kilmartin, we would like to welcome you to our group presentation exploring the use of polymerase chain reaction in science. In this presentation, we will explore polymerase chain reaction, or as it is more commonly known, PCR, and how it was discovered. We will also delve into the inner workings of the PCR process, explore the strengths and weaknesses of the technique, its multiple scientific applications, and lastly, how we might use PCR in the future. PCR is a three-step process used in molecular biology to detect and amplify segments of DNA. It has been referenced as the, D the molecular photocopier as it allows scientists to copy specific segments of a complex DNA molecule. This reproduction allows for the multiplication of target DNA segments. Scientists began to consider amplifying DNA in the 1950s after Kornberg's discovery of DNA polymerase. What is now known as PCR was discovered in 1983 by Carrie B. Mullis. The idea to pair primers and bracket the preferred DNA was a revelation that came to him while on a moonlit drive with his girlfriend, as I am sure most breakthrough science concepts do. In 1993, Mullis, with the assistance of Michael Smith, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his research and development of this reaction. The prize didn't go uncontested, though, as there had been many had been mention of some similar reactions and techniques in this area prior to Mullis' discovery in the 1950s. Several components are required to carry out PCR successfully. These components are added to the solution in which the PCR is performed. A sample of double-stranded DNA called template DNA. This is the target molecule for the amplification and can be obtained from cells of any living thing, such as humans, animals, plants, or viruses. A pair of oglionucleotides, often referred to as primers. These short, chemically synthesized sections of DNA have an explicit nucleotide sequence, which is complementary to the end segments of the target DNA that is to be amplified. DNA polymerase, which is the enzyme used to synthesize DNA molecules, more recently replaced with thermostable DNA polymerase, as it does not denature during heating. The purine bases, adenine and guanine, and the purine idine bases, cytosine and thymine are needed. These deoxynucleotide triphosphates are the key components to the structure of DNA and are needed to create new DNA. When the specific nucleotide sequences at each end of the target DNA segment are known, PCR can be used to amplify the segment. PCR consists of three steps that are repeated each time, doubling the DNA present in the sample. Step one, the denaturing, denaturing of template DNA. Denaturation is described by Lodish and colleagues as the process of disrupting the protein structure by altering the charges on the amino acid side chains, causing the weak bonds to break. An example of these weak bonds are the hydrogen bonds that form the secondary structure of the DNA molecule. Denaturation can occur from heat, extremes of pH, or exposure to denaturants. In PCR, the template DNA is heated above 90 degrees Celsius briefly, resulting in denaturation of the double-stranded helical structure of the template DNA molecule and breaking the hydrogen bonds that link the complementary nitrogenous base pairs. Denaturation results in two single-stranded template DNA molecules. Step two is the annealing or binding of oglionucleotides. 
Oglionucleotides, which are also referred to as primers, are short segments of DNA with a specific sequence of complementary bases that are unique to a target sequence of the template DNA. In this step, the temperature of a solution is then lowered to between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the two chemically synthesized primers that are present in great excess in the solution bind to the denatured DNA molecules. Step three is extension. The two important components of this step are DNA polymerase, an enzyme that acts as a catalyst in the production of double-stranded DNA and the deoxyonucleotide triphosphate molecules, also known as nitrogenous bases, that form the unique sequences of all DNA, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. The elongation of the second DNA strand begins when the solution is again heated, this time to 70 degrees Celsius. At the three prime end of the primers that are attached to the denatured template DNA in step two, the binding of DNA polymerase occurs and the production of the complementary strands of DNA from the four nitrogenous bases present in the solution begins. This step creates two double-stranded DNA molecules from one initial denatured double-strand DNA molecule. From here, the process is repeated in a second cycle. In step one, this time the two new double-stranded DNA molecules are denatured, creating four single-stranded DNA molecules. At step two, the primers attach to each of the four single-stranded DNA molecules, followed by step three, where with the help of DNA polymerase, four double-stranded DNA molecules are created. On the third cycle, four double-stranded DNA molecules become eight, and then eight become 16. These three steps can be repeated numerous times, each time doubling the amount of DNA present in the solution and quickly creating millions of copies of an initially small sample of DNA. When PCR was first discovered, the DNA polymerase used was not stable at high temperatures. Therefore, the DNA polymerase needed to be replenished for each cycle. Through the discovery by Thomas Brock in the 1960s of Thermus aquaticus, DNA polymerase or TAC DNA polymerase, a thermostable bacterium that lives in hot springs, the enzyme is able to remain active after every heating step and does not need to be replenished. Two thermostable DNA polymerases are now used in applications of PCR. These can both withstand greater temperatures and result in fewer copying errors, leading to a higher fidelity of the process. They were discovered near thermal vents on the ocean floor and as such have been named accordingly, vent DNA polymerase and deep vent DNA polymerase withstanding temperatures of 98 degrees Celsius and 104 degrees Celsius, respectively. An automated programmable thermal cycler is a laboratory machine that can cycle through the steps of denaturation, annealing and extension efficiently, amplifying the segment of interest quickly. A reaction that cycles 20 times will amplify the specific target sequence one million fold and can take upwards of three hours. The cycle is typically repeated 20 to 30 times. The programmable thermocycle though, make this process less labor intensive. Over the years, the PCR process has evolved. Menon and colleagues in their article published in 1999, identify the following four examples of how PCR has been modified for different purposes. Multiplex PCR is a method where a number of DNA segments are multiplied at the same time. Random amplified polymorphic DNA typing determines the congruence of DNA, which is useful in comparing different samples of DNA for example, in forensics as DNA fingerprinting. 
Reverse transcriptase PCR. This method uses RNA as the initial template rather than DNA. Then through the process of retroviral reverse transcriptase, the template RNA is converted to complementary DNA, which is then amplified. This method has important applications in the detection of the RNA virus human immunodeficiency virus, better known as HIV, and tracking of the anti-retroviral therapy treatment effect in HIV patients. Lastly, ligase chain reaction, where two primers on each of the complementary single-stranded template DNA attach alongside each other to form the whole target sequence. DNA ligase, an enzyme that facilitates the joining of the two primers by their phosphodiester bonds, creates a complete double-stranded segment. The possibilities for the application of the PCR technique are numerous. In the medical field, uses include identification of and research to identify and explain DNA, such as the Human Genome Project, identification of genes and genetic disorders, and early diagnosis of diseases through early detection of pathogens. Impressively, PCR also has a number of other uses beyond the medical field. These include DNA fingerprinting for crime scene investigations and paternity testing, as well as food science and molecular archaeology, which examines DNA present in ancient artifacts. In the following slides, we will, have, we will highlight some of these less known and more interesting applications and present some case studies to further enhance understanding of PCR and its versatility in molecular biology. The early detection of pathogens have numerous benefits for individual and public health outcomes. As PCR amplifies a sample of DNA, the detection of a pathogen that is only present in small amounts is possible, such as during the early onset of a disease. For individuals, this may result in early treatment that will reduce the impact of the disease. And from a public health perspective, this can help to stop the spread of diseases across populations. The following example looks at the method of quantitative real-time PCR. This method, in addition to identifying the pathogen DNA, can quantify the amount of the pathogen present in a DNA sample. In the early 2000s, the severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS epidemic, was recorded. An initial infection of atypical pneumonia was reported in November 2002 in the Guangdong province in China. Over the subsequent months, a few deaths occurred and cases increased. In February 2003, a doctor from the Guangdong province visited Hong Kong and stayed in a hotel. In the following weeks, more cases were identified and deaths increased. In March 2003, a global alert was issued by the World Health Organization. The SARS pathogen DNA was identified through quantitative real-time PCR. Although these results were not initially available for early detection, however, the sensitivity of the tests subsequently improved, allowing early diagnosis. This was vital due to the speed at which the infection spreads. Quantitative real-time PCR supported the rapid reduction in the spread of the disease, reducing the overall disastrous effects that may have otherwise endured. PCR is also used to identify genetic disorders. Prenatal diagnosis has developed with the assistance of PCR to amplify approximately 10% of fetal cell free DNA that is present in maternal plasma. This has allowed for non-invasive prenatal diagnosis which has resulted in reduced risk to the fetus and the identification of a range of genetic disorders and diseases. This is a great advancement to previous invasive methods such as amniocentesis, which carries a risk of miscarriage. A further example is the identification of the haemoglobin beta gene mutation. This recessive mutation is the cause of sickle cell anemia. Research completed by Barrett and colleagues in 2012 explored new options in PCR as previous prenatal diagnosis 
had focused on genes that were carried by the father and not the mother, but still present in the fetus. Examples include cystic fibrosis, which affects the lungs and digestive system, and the rhesus disease, where there is an incompatibility between the rhesus factors. DNA matching is also used to match, the, to match organ donors to their transplant recipients. This advancement decreases the possibility that donated organs will be rejected. Post-transplant, there is a high possibility that the recipient may contract illnesses and serious infections as their immune system is weakened. Cytomegalovirus is a common infection that can be contracted by transplant recipients. Through PCR, cytomegalovirus can be identified early, reducing further complications. Molecular archaeology has developed through the exploration and research of historic artefacts. The study of DNA found has long fascinated scientists. With DNA fragments, fragments sorry, degrading over time, it was a challenge to work with the delicate DNA strands to uncover more. With the introduction of the PCR technique, further advances in this field of work are being revealed to scientists. From studies as far back as 1993, tuberculosis was found in the DNA of ancient bones using the PCR method. Further evidence of the technique of PCR was in a laboratory in Japan. Scientists Suzuki and colleagues report the findings that identified a pathogen of an infectious disease known as leprosy. Leprosy results in multiple deformities, including progressive bone defects. The pathogen was found in DNA from skeletal human remains that were exhumed from ancient burial sites that existed over 1,500 years ago. Through the use of PCR, scientists' findings indicated that although leprosy in DNA segments had already been found in archaeological bone remains throughout Europe and the Middle East, no reports from Far East Asia had ever been found. Through further research, the disease which originated in Africa reported to have been spread to other parts of the world by human migrations and trade routes. The final example that we will share is a food-related application of PCR. Food allergies are becoming more prevalent around the world. The most severe of food allergies, anaphylaxis, can be fatal and is caused by a variety of everyday food products, including egg, peanuts, and fish. Understandably, due to the high risk to some individuals in consuming these foods, the Codex Alimentary Commission recommends labeling the above and other ingredients that are known as major food allergens. Miyazaki and colleagues test the specificity and sensitivity of quantitative real-time PCR for wheat, buckwheat and peanuts in a range of food products to ensure they comply with regulations for Jap Japan's food allergy labelling. Initially, trace amounts of wheat were detected from the testing environment. It was identified that performing UV eerie radiation treatment decreased this type of contamination. With this challenge overcome, it was determined that PCR showed high sensitivity and a reduction in false negative results. Therefore, using this method would provide accurate and safe food allergy labeling. Identified weakness, weaknesses of PCR have been overcome since its discovery over 35 years ago. Of particular note, the identification and use of thermostable DNA polymerase, as discussed earlier, is an example of this. The simplicity, speed, and relatively low cost of PCR allows the process to be repeated if and when needed, giving less importance to shortcomings. However, as highlighted by authors Gary Bean and Avia Shia, these include errors and mutations during multiplication. However, Karcher states that thermostable deep vent DNA polymerase has very high sequence fidelity on, of synthesis, resulting in more accurate results 
then tack DNA polymerase. Contamination due to the amplifying nature of the technique. DNA that contaminates a sample, even when small, can produce inconsistent and incorrect results. This, however, can be overcome with careful quality control. Knowledge of the DNA sequence by microbiologists is important. They need to select primers to be used at stage two of the process to create starting points for the multiplying of the DNA sequence. This requires information on specific DNA sequences. This may cause limitations on detecting new diseases, such in the example of the SARS epidemic. What does the future hold for PCR? This question seems to be limitless. As the PCR process is already widely used, its adaptability has allowed for many variations to arise. A research study by Chan and colleagues in 2016 identified the use of portable thermos thermal cycler designed from repurposed stainless steel insulated thermoses. Prior to this, the only option was a commercially available thermal cycler. The commercial thermocycler needs continuous power and is expensive to build. The thermo thermal cycler allows the detection of infectious diseases, pathogen detection and food and water safety concerns to be addressed in areas where there is no suitable power supply, supporting public health efforts in developing countries and rural settings to have access to a quick and portable PCR testing device, allowing an innovative low-cost solution to help support medical professionals to provide quality care in remote locations. Further advances to the current widely accepted process of PCR have been made. A review article by Kavanagh and Bathrick in 2018 looked at the process of direct PCR amplification, a method in which a sample is added directly to an amplification reaction without being subjected to prior DNA extraction. Kavanagh and Bathrick cite the advantages can be seen in forensic laboratories with a reduction in DNA loss. However, the standard use of this method has not gained traction due to regulatory guidelines. So, when we hear on the nightly news of the origin of a 1,000-year-old virus, or when we buy some nut-free snacks at the supermarket, we are experiencing the uses and benefits of polymerase chain reaction and can thank teams of scientists like Carrie Mullis and Thomas Block for getting us there. The references used are included on this slide and have also been added to the comments section of this video. Thank you for listening. <laughs>